today I wanted to talk about two things. I wanted to do another sort of short book review, which is basically this book right here. I Am a Church Member by Tom S. Rainier. I know it's backwards, sorry about that. But Mexican priest just wrote a book about why Trump's a loser and he says it's worth a read. So I, know, I did not vote for him, so I might give it a read. I don't know. So in this book, this these kind of like study books are not usually how I want or like to uh, do any kind of Bible study. They're just not my thing. They're usually to me boring or too short or not enough um, explanation at all. But this guy has, I kept this book because it was mostly just go read the Bible, go read this, go do that. And this guy has uh, something about, if I can find it, it's about preferences. And of course I can't find it now that I want to talk about it. <laughs> so basically he's talking about how we need to put aside our preferences to be the body of Christ because otherwise what we're going to do is we're going to get bogged down in our preferences. That's all we're going to want to do is preference this and preference that. So when we're doing this he says and when you think you've had it with making sacrifices for others, remember the cross. As you were overwhelmed by Jesus' undeserved love for you that caused him to sacrifice everything, including his preferences, you will be able to do the same for others. That will put things in perspective. My husband just came and left. <laughs> so preferences is something we hear talked about a lot, a lot. And people say, well, it's not my preferred pronoun or it's not my preferred this that or the other right and in the body we set aside our preferences in favor of loving each other as Christ loved the church you're going to hear that phrase in the Bible all the time you love as Christ loved the church so putting aside preferences is one of the ways that we pick up our cross and we carry it and that is one of the reasons why I kept this book even though I don't it's not my preference <laughs> to do a Bible study that way but to tell the truth I have had some awesome insights God has spoken to me through these kind of book sort of studies so it's not that, that they're horrible or anything it's just I don't prefer them you can still learn God can use anything to talk to you. So, this is going to be kind of a night ramble because that's really all I had to say about this book. If you like it, if you think this is you like doing these kind of book things, it's really short and it has like homework for you to do at the end, like most of them. And it's only like 79 pages and most of about half of that's like the homework and but what I like about it is that it takes you and takes you back into the Bible now the other thing I wanted to talk about was Trump's comments sorry I'm doing this kinda precariously balancing my <laughs> laptop okay so Trump's comments of take their guns first and due process later is one of the reasons why I did not vote for this guy all right, so he, I have talked to people about why did they vote for Trump and why did they do this, that, and the other, right? A lot of people voted for Trump because they thought he would be really strong on the economy, and he has been, and I agree with that. I do believe that he would be strong on the economy, and that is what he was. He was strong on the economy, but that's it, really. <laughs> that's it. Uh, there is... When you grow up with some people, even if they're not like people that are in your life every day, but you see them like on TV and you hear stuff about them all the time, Trump and Hillary were like my childhood growing up. I heard all about them, all the bad things they did. If they did any good things, I heard that too. I just knew that neither one of these people would be a good president. All right. One 
Hillary doesn't understand how to be a president. To her, being a president is like being the king, or sorry, the queen, and you can do whatever you want. You can make people do this, that, and the other, and that's what she's going for. She's going for power. For Trump, it's more like, oh boy, I'm the president. Let's go through this, you know, and he has sort of a play idea about what a president is. Nobody understands. I don't think people who go into the government understand that as the government, you're not supposed to be there to do a whole lot. A lot of people nowadays think that that's what the government's for. It's there to do all this stuff. And it's not. So for me, that's, uh, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone who understands their constitutional responsibilities and that those constitutional responsibilities limit what they can do. So this time around, I voted Constitutional Party. And I am very not happy with what he said. I think I watched uh, Philip DeFranco on this, and I think he has the same uh, idea as I do. And, you know, just what if that had been said by anyone else? Oh, my gosh, everybody would be flipping their freaking lid. And very few people are. I saw a... Uh oh, what's his name? A Steven Crowder where he got upset about it, right? And then I saw, I listened to some of Ben Shapiro where he was talking about it. And there are people out there who really think that this is like some sort of crazy 6D, 60D chess or something where he's going to make things happen. I don't think that's the case. I think the American people are going to get screwed again. And, you know, from there, we're just going to keep getting screwed. <laughs> Unless we can put people in there who understand that their role is to do what we tell them to do, and, and even then not that half the time. Their role is to do very little and to put it on back onto the people, most of it. I think that unless we get there, we're just not going to have a good system at all. We've wandered too far from the beginning. So there's that. That's what I think about that. I'm very disappointed. I, gun rights and freedom of speech and the freedom of religion are very important to me because I think that without those three things, a person can't really be free. If you, if you can't say what's on your mind, whether it be offensive or not, you're not free to speak. If you can't worship God the way you see fit or according to your conscience, then you're not free either. And I think that if you can't defend yourself against all enemies, foreign, domestic, and whatever size they are, I think that you're not, you can't possibly stay free. So I think for me, these are the, th the three freedoms that really, and of course you have to be alive because I'm really against abortion as well. So, and so to hear anyone put it as like a, you got to take their guns from them. It really rubbed me raw. I had to take a couple, a few days off because it's all I can think about. And then I remembered about this book and then I read talking about, you know, I am a church member and preferences and all this other stuff. And I just had to say to myself, okay, so we're just going to not worry about it right now. We're going to read, we're going to gather our thoughts and basically my thought is, that is a horrible thing to say. I was very, like, it was like somebody took a cheese grater and scraped it down my face. <laughs> as far as how that made me react to it. For me, you don't take away my guns. You don't take away my ability to worship God. And you don't take away my ability to speak my mind. As soon as you start doing that you become someone who is basically not for freedom and not for, you know, me living my life as a free person. Take that as you will. And I need to be free. I, I cannot even, one of the things, one of the other things I do on YouTube is a travel channel because I love to travel. I don't want to be stuck in a house. <laughs> I want to be stuck in something that has you know, wheels so I can go down the road and be totally free, have freedom of movement, movement, thoughts, you know, worship, and defense. Excuse me. And when I don't have those things, 
or I think those things are being taken from me. I get really nervous and start wanting to change everything, or as some people say, burn it down. <laughs> so this is not this this kind of thing is what makes people nervous. Is what makes people say, "Look, our government is turning tyrannical." And this is why we need our guns. You know, it's a perfect example of why we of why people think that way. So that's all I've got for today, guys. Remember to read your Bible and do some prayer. And remember, guys, the only way evil flourishes is for good men to do nothing.